Hey guys, this is for the Crix Flyers basketball 2015 season. I want to run you through our two offensive sets quickly and show you the pieces of it that are most important. Hopefully you'll be able to run it well in real life. So keys to success for one, or as uh, other teams might call it, down. Um, this is a traditionally a screening motion offense that requires you keeping the floor spread. You've got to have a lot of room to make a screen, make a proper, uh, uh, decent cut. So please make sure you keep some space between one another. Screen away from the ball is the basic principle. Whenever you pass, head the other direction, or if you see the ball near you, you're probably needing to screen away at that time. If you're not getting the ball quickly to score. Try to score after the first cycle. Pretty much all offenses in basketball, if you try to score the first time through, the defense is set. They haven't been stretched. You haven't forced them to move. And so they're ready to counter whatever you're doing. You're better off going through the play a couple times so you get a better look at the basket or maybe even an open layup. But that's going to take a few cycles. So be patient with the offense and run it through. V-cut to set up screens. So don't just wait for the screen. If you're waiting, so is the defense. Go away from the screen. When the screen comes, come back to it and come tight against the shoulder of whoever's setting the screen for you. When you screen, a general rule is screen on a butt cheek. Don't, don't screen someone's back. Don't screen their hip because that allows them to step over or step under the screen. You want to lock up one of their feet with your feet and get right on 45 degree angle to their backside. So pick one cheek, not two, not zero, but one only. And then roll after your screens. If you set a really good screen and you roll, it's going to give the person who went off your screen more time and potentially it seals that defender and creates space for you. You might be the person who gets that ball back. In the end, you're going to see people, defenders, start to cheat this play. So be creative. You can throw in an extra cut or roll off a screen, but in the end, keep the form so that your teammates are confused. So if you're a little experiment in cutting, or bobbing and weaving or calling for the ball it doesn't work then jump back to the form of the play and keep it going so your team can continue here's what it looks like you start with a three out two in arrangement classic balanced motion setup in down these little V cuts at the bottom set up the screen so the screen comes down wherever the defender might be the defenders are not in this uh, illustration but the point guard's going to have two options, both wings coming out. You don't have to do this part. If your defender in this part was cheating way down, waiting for you to come down and screen, then the best thing you do is run at him hard two steps and then pop back out. It doesn't matter who gets the ball on the wing. It doesn't have to be the person who gets the screen. So if you've got cheaters sagging low to the basket, then just V-cut, come back. You don't have to set that screen. But if you do, it would look like this, ball fake, ball pass to one of the wings. Now that the ball is on the far left side by our orientation, we should see screening away. Look at the V-cuts, screen on the defender, and whichever way makes the most sense, that's the way you will go. We had the post player at the bottom going under this screen. Sometimes they'll go over. That might even happen here. Generally, it's pretty easy to go over from the wing position. If you get one under, that's great. You might have an opportunity in the lane. I don't know. So read your defender and try to make a good decision. If this ball ends up going inside, which is where we want, then we're assuming probably that this post player has a real chance to score. And they should probably explore that. They should try to score. If they're covered or double covered, then they're probably going to need to kick it out. Here comes some up screens. This is one of the best parts of the offense in my opinion. If you get this far, you're going to get really good looks at the basket, but it takes patience. Those V cuts set up the screens as always, V cut before the screen. The screens are set. Now this post player, again, if they've got the ball down there and they must have been open, they must have had good position, they have a chance for a drop step towards the baseline for a score. They have to swing that bottom. In this case, it would be their left foot swings and opens up to the hoop so they can score. If they've got it, they should take it. If they don't, they've got two options on cutters, one coming into the center of the lane, one coming through the top of the key at the free throw line, looking, 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 and then maybe popping out. And it maintains the form. So if you want, you can try to be creative, throw in one more cut as this person leaves. It'll create this vacuum of defense. Maybe this wing wants to just take one quick jab cut in there and pop back out. But they restored the form. 
which means we can run this play, pass it back out, and we're back where we know what to do. The two closest to the ball will screen away, and we run it again. This can go over and over and over. It will almost never work in the first three sets of screens. Almost never, because the offense is so used to seeing it. They're getting used to it. They're cheating ahead of it. But after the fourth and the fifth, somebody gets lazy. Another person loses track of it. They forget which direction it goes. They, they uh, project that the screen's going to go one way and they were wrong. We need that time, that cycling through, for the defense to make mistakes so you can get an easier basket. But that means you got to be patient. All right. The other choice, or here they are again, the things we must do to make this work. Again, be patient. Spread the floor out. Screen away from the ball. V-cut to set up the screens. Screen on one butt cheek, not two, not zero, but just one. Roll after every screen and be creative. You're a basketball player and in the end of the game, the coach can play, can uh, write up a beautiful play, but you're the one that sees the holes in the defense and you've got to take advantage of them. If it doesn't work out though, restore the form of the play so your teammates can keep track of what's going on and respond accordingly. And number two, this is what the girls will be running. This is meant to be a zone offense, but it's probably one of my favorite in terms of man offenses. This is a form of what was run by the historic uh, Michael Jordan Bulls and the uh, original Kobe Bryant Lakers. They won lots of, uh, lots of championships off of what's usually called a triangle offense. We might call it two at the boys level, um, girls, we're going to call this overload. Overload because you're putting a lot of players on one side of the court, four, and only one on the other. Now, another key, as always, keep things spread. If you don't spread it out, the defense packs it in, and you can't move, you can't cut, you can't screen effectively, so keep spread. Try to score after the first or second cycle. De I mean, unless somebody really messed up, the first isn't going to happen. So be patient with the offense. V-cut to get open. Not a ton of screening going on in here, not intentional screening. There is a place where a screen is very useful, and I'll point that out in a little bit, and we've practiced that, at least within the boys' practice. Try to rub your defender off on cuts. Try to ditch that person. If they cheat under, you go over. If they go over, you go under. You just try to drive them nuts. Make it hard to follow you. Cut straight and fast. Don't do any curvy stuff. If you curve, the defender will go straight and they will beat you there. You've got to go fast and straight. Don't try to hide either. Hiding doesn't really work. I mean, it might occasionally in a weird situation, but if you're hiding, then you're just giving your defender time to find you again. Go where you're going fast, beat them there in a straight line. And of course, again, be creative, but restore the form. Keep the form so the play can keep running for the rest of your team. Here's what it looks like. We can start in the same Three out, two in if you want. We'll have, uh, at the, the girls will have an overload call, and the point guard will point to one side or the other. If they point, say, to the left here, or the point guard's left, our right, as we're looking at this, then you have a slide over of the whole team. And this is what we mean by overload. Four players have overloaded one side. You're basically cutting the court in half and playing four on four over here. So this person kind of makes them seem unimportant, but they're very important because we need to swing back to them and they become the playmaker on the other side. You'll see that in a moment. So the ball has moved from the point guard down to the wing. The point guard just kind of hangs at the top. This is the court general, the distributor. If it gets messed up, the point guard needs to say, set it up, overload, overload, and push it over. Or at the, the boys' side, we would say, two, two, ball in the wing. Options to look for would always be this inside post player. This is going to be a true center, a five, and that's going to be kind of this uh, up arrow shape cut all day long. This bobbing back and forth, trying to penetrate the zone. Even though we consider this a zone offense, it will work against man, and girls will run it to begin in any situation because it's just a great offense. It, it has been called a triangle offense because you have a triangle here and a triangle here. It's like two triangles stuck together. Here's what might happen. You might pass into the post. You might pass down into the short corner here. You might pass up back to the point guard because all this is well covered by defense or maybe somebody's just not doing their job, V-cutting, I don't know. But let's say the ball goes down. 
which would be great. It goes down into the corner. Now, we want to do a same side curl cut. If you pass to your left, you should cut to your right. And this time, you would see the wing come over the post and under, looking for a ball close to the hoop. So here are the looks that might be interesting to this low wing. Here comes the curl cut. Mm, and we need that ball to be there when they're arriving. Now, you have to read the defense here. If the defense is staying tight with you, give them a little V-cut down. Hit tight around this and trust that your teammate is going to pass as you curl, hit you in stride, and give you a sweet layup. You can always two-foot jump stop here and just make sure you get your hand as high as you can and jump as high as you can. And hopefully the person behind you is not going to swat you from behind. you got to be quick on this. And the pass has to be early, not on time. It needs to be early. Right? If that works, great. We're not going to look at that right now, though. We're going to say this doesn't quite work out, so we're going to work over to a cross cut. Notice the cutter comes over and fills this corner, and we'll just allow this low wing to dribble up to a true wing position. And now we're back where we were. This is also the situation if we rewind in the original guard who was at this wing spot. If they had decided not to pass down and pass up, this would be the same thing. This would be the same response. Ball goes up to the point guard. Point guard's looking down. Might be a potential there to do something with the post. So post comes up and over. They could stop here for a second and look for it. That's fine. Remember, three in the key. You only get three seconds inside this key before you have to get both feet outside. Here comes that cross cut. Boom, ball goes all the way to the other side. Here's the person outside the overload who seemed like they weren't worth anything. When this ball is swung back, it needs to be quick. This point guard is distributing. So it goes one, two. This cut comes through at the same time. Maybe this post player is in perfect position and gets hit. Maybe not. But usually what you're looking for is this one, this cross cut. Depending on what the defense does, if the defense sucks way down, which they probably will, trying to prevent that layup, then you might roll over the top and get this ball out here, and you might get a decent short shot somewhere near the block, which would be great. If they tr play it true and they try to, try to stick tight to you, you can go underneath everybody, and sometimes you can pick up this ball here. So you've got to read your defender. You'll get better at that as practice goes on and you get some experience in games. But it's a long cross-court cut, and it draws a lot of attention. Now, we still want to restore the form of the play, so how do we do that? If that cutter doesn't get what they want, they go under everything, no, 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 didn't get it, didn't get it, kick out to the low wing, and the person on the opposite end fills on that unoverloaded side, I guess, the, the weak side, we would call it, fills in that weak side wing, waiting for that skip, bump, bump, through the point guard, and we get another one of those long cross cuts. Now this first one's not going to work almost ever. You've got to swing that ball through, get a cross cut, get that shift. Everybody continues to shift back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, defense is either one time that somebody's going to forget the shift. They're not paying attention. They got caught staring at the ball. There's lots of reasons they can mess up. You have to give them a chance or many chances to mess up. And then you have to see it happen. You have to respond appropriately to it. That's going to take some experience. You've got to try this over and over and over. So be patient. Pass that ball. Run it again and again and again. So keep the floor spread. Don't expect to score on the first or even the second swing through. Swing that ball back and forth. V-cut to get open or even to set up a screen on occasion. Try to rub your defender off on the cuts. Cut straight and fast. Don't try to hide. It doesn't work to hide. Just get there as fast as you can. And every once in a while, do something crazy that doesn't. That kind of keeps the defense honest. Just as a little weird. And then restore the form. Jump back to the spot you're supposed to be in so the play can continue. All right, there's more, but we'll add that on another day. And as coach is ready to do that, we'll release another one of these videos. So I encourage you to watch this several times. Try to think about what's going to happen next. Predict. And then check the video, hit pause, play, whatever you got to do. Um, the PowerPoint itself we'll try to make available, uh, but we'll have this video out uh, tonight. And you can watch this as often as you like.